What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ. I am Nicholas. This is Big Dogs Gotta Eat. Fantasy football. It's Friday, so we are jumping into a 2019 fantasy football mock draft on the draft website and or slash the draft app. It's the GOAT. It's the only place I really do mocks nowadays because everything is at least a dollar buy-in, so they're mocks, but you kind of have to pay a little bit. What we're going to do today is a 12-team one dollar entry buy-in if you want to draft with me if you want to get in one of these drafts on a friday you have to sign up on draft.com or the draft app you have to use the promo code b d g e when you sign up that will net you a free three dollars to draft with so you're getting a little something something for you the draft has already filled up i use my phone normally when i'm drafting but they have a clean ass website they have a clean interface on the phone we're going to jump into Friday's mock draft. We are completely full. This is 12 team, half PPR. I am drafting from the third spot. Okay. I don't normally get uh, around the three spot. And these, for some reason, they always throw me at the end. It's wildly disrespectful of draft. I need to talk to my contacts. Um, but yeah, if you're, listening, if you're looking for like a really, really, really good place to prep for your 2019 fantasy football season, draft is it. Because, like I said, I mean, you can make free ones, but if you throw in $10, plus you'll get the $3 free um, when you use promo code BDGE, you will get $10 or 10 different mock drafts to do throughout the summer. So you'll be fully prepped. And when people put a dollar in, obviously they're taking it seriously because any amount of money that you throw in is going to be taken seriously. This is America. This is a democracy. This is capitalism. Make that bread. So first pick off the board, Ezekiel Elliott. Interesting uh, with all of the news surrounding... Zeke right now. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. I'm going to go with Christian McCaffrey. I think this is a no-brainer at the 103. Why is this not starting? Drop player. Okay, so I usually prefer doing it on my phone, but sometimes I do it on the website, and uh, I always have this handy if I am doing it on the website in case something weird happens. A lot of the times I have a lot of programs running, so there's a lot of nonsense going on in the background let me close out some stuff let me close out a schlap microsoft word messages yeah we should be straight okay sorry welcome welcome bike so zeke you know now we're hearing the rumors that melvin gordon wanted to hold out zeke's looking to hold out into training camp zeke needs to i'm not exactly sure on all the contractual details and everything but i know zeke needs to report to camp by august 6th in order to accrue a new uh in order to accrue a season going towards free agency. He's still very much on his rookie deal. I believe he has this final season to play out as well as the fifth year option. So anytime that a, basically the way contracts work in the NFL is when you hear option, right? Player option, team option. It's usually a three-year deal with a player option or a four-year deal with a team option. What that means is when you get to the end of the third year, they have the option. If it's a player option, they could opt in and continue on that contract that they already have in place. If it's a team option, they can choose to reserve the rights of that player. So four years in, Zeke will get 40 years. That 50 years, a team option. They'll be able to choose whether or not they want to bring him back. Usually, if you're not like the worst player in your draft, you will be taken back on that fifth year player option. So uh, with Zeke, I'm not too worried about it. I think it's kind of like the start of him trying to tell them that he's not happy and he's seeing all these players, Demarcus Lawrence, and you know. Dak's going to get paid. Amari needs to get paid. He's seeing all these players about to get paid. So he wants to make sure that they know where he stands. And I, I think Zeke probably has more basis than Melvin Gordon right now because one, um, well, I mean, he has more time on his contract. So maybe he doesn't have more power towards it. But just overall, the situation, like Zeke is Zeke, is Zeke right? They run that entire offense through Zeke. So I believe he has more leverage from that way. He's also a lot younger. So where you get nervous about extending a guy like Melvin Gordon is he's already 26 and um, you know, you don't want to extend him four or five years because by the time that contract is done, he'll probably be nowhere near as effective as he was when the contract started. So I can understand why the Chargers might be hesitant. I do think both, I, I think Zeke will play out. I think it's just more so like him telling them that he's unhappy and he wants an extension. I think Melvin Gordon is probably going to get his extension from the Chargers, but we shall see. Um, I think Christian McCaffrey was the easy smash on the cop button at 103. Zeke, we don't know what's going on with him, obviously. Saquon Barkley has the David Johnson-esque red flags around him. So Christian McCaffrey probably becomes my uh, pick there by default over Kamar, just because the workload would be there for McCaffrey. Some people are asking, you know, do we are we nervous about Christian McCaffrey and his workload or whatever? 
I'm not because they didn't add anybody. So I think McCaffrey gets a similar workload, plus the fact that most of his touches come from way of the air, or at least a majority of them come from the air. He doesn't get hit as much, you know, so I'm not really worried about his durability. He's never been someone who you needed to be nervous about when it comes to durability. So I like C-Mac there. Um, if you want to hear a breakdown of the top four guys, me and Noah went very in-depth on Tuesday, which was actually yesterday's video. I'm filming this on Wednesday. So in case anything comes out over the next day, two days, by Friday morning, so the next day and a half, um, something may have changed. Okay, okay, let's let's talk about this for a second, because we just saw Marlon Mack go at the 2-6. In the beginning of the offseason, you were able to get Marlon Mack at like the 4-6. And I actually did did just get Marlon Mack at the 4-6 in my um uh, in the Scott Fishbowl. And I wanna I wanna break this down a little bit. In terms of guys that have risen up really quickly and guys that are falling really far behind based on where they started. So some quick ADP changes. Um D. Williams, Mike Evans. I have two guys on the board here that I am more than happy taking. It's Nick Chubb and Antonio Brown. Brown is off the board. I'm all in on Nick Chubb, bro. I am all in. He's a fucking beast. He's going to control that. That backfield has so much mess going on with between Duke Johnson's trade commands and Kareem Hunt not being able to even touch the field until week 10. Nick Chubb is going to dominate touches back there. Nick Chubb is going to dominate yardage and production. I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up leading the NFL in, in rushing yards this year whatsoever. I'm not sure what his odds are on that, but um, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Let's see what else we got going on here. So I have two running backs off the rip. I like to get my running backs early because I just think there's so much value at wide receiver from rounds three through like six. And then also again in rounds like eight through 11, where you get all those like sophomore breakout ish guys like the QTs and the MVS and and guy and Christian Kirks and guys like that. Um, But going back to Marlon Mack, like you, you you guys know, no one likes Marlon Mack more than me. And, And you'll hear this on Monday's video. I'm going to break down my must own running backs for the 2019 fantasy football season. That's going to be a good episode. No one likes Marlon Mack more than me. But there's a point at which value starts ripping off the player if you're drafting them too early. Like, yes, I can love a player. That doesn't mean I'm going to use the fucking 101 on that player, guys. Like, you, you got to have some sensibility in it. So if you if you take my, my opinions and my analysis um, valuably and you use them towards your drafts, one, thank you. I appreciate the support and everything. But two, don't take it overboard. There's always a line between value and guys that you love when you're talking about fantasy football. Right now, there's still a lot of good wide receivers on the board. I'm probably going to grab Zach Ertz. I say the same thing every video. I will not draft one of these tight ends in round two between Kittle and Ertz. But if they fall to round three, I am all, I'm all systems go on Zach Ertz in round three because I want one of these elite tight ends because the situation there is just so poor. Um, and I'm happy with how the draft started out right now. Two running backs and then a tight end. And I'd be happy with this in a season-long league as well. Most of the times if I take someone uh, tight end or in the early rounds, I don't end up liking what my team looks like at the end of the day. But but Ertz is just such an advantage over everybody else behind him, right? I mean, obviously Kelsey and Kittle are up there in that tier with him. But um, let me get Ertz and then let me not have to touch the tight end position until like round 12 or 13 in these best ball drafts. So in terms of guys that like what, what I was saying before, the, the subject I was on in the beginning of the offseason, if you've been listening to me for a while, like you are going to hear me talk about players I do not like. And you're going to hear me talk about players that I really like. And m- the majority, the large, 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 large majority are only based on where they're getting picked when that analysis is being done. So if you watch a video, and you're like, oh, you told me not to draft this person in round eight or whatever. And you look at the date of that video and it's four months ago. Things have changed, right? So guys that I really didn't like in the beginning of the offseason, um, for instance, like a Chris Carson is a good example because Chris Carson was like a fourth round pick when the offseason started. Now, the hype around Rashad Penny has gotten so great that I've actually seen Rashad Penny get drafted before Chris Carson. Chris Carson is the starter there if he's on the field. Yes, I have very many injury concerns, which you'll hear on Monday's video as well. A lot of injury concerns, a lot of concerns around it, but... Chris Carson is not a fucking scrub by any means. And if you're getting him, you know, I've seen him fall to the sixth, the seventh round in a lot of these best ball drafts now, whereas he was going three rounds earlier, I hated him in the fourth round, would never take him there. But in the seventh round for a guy who's as good as Carson is, I think his talent is really, really, really something special. Um, 
as murky as the backfield situation might seem, but this Seahawks team just runs the ball and runs the ball and runs the ball. So Carson there is great. Like also same thing with like Sony Michelle. Sony Michelle, I know that Harris is getting a lot of hype. He's moving up drafts. While Sony Michelle was like a third or fourth round pick, and I absolutely hated him there. I said that all all off season, but now um, Sony is going. I I just I'm I'm able to grab him in the early sixth round now. And Sony Michelle, I understand the knee issues are there, but he had knee issues last year, and he was great in the games that he played. And that will be the case again in 2019 um, if they're just smart with him and they are using him diligently, right? And not forcing him in the preseason and just letting his knee rest. He's going to have like 10 to 12 really good games where he's getting 18 or 20 carries. And in that Patriots offense, you automatically have double digit rushing touchdown upside. So you don't need to know when to start him. In best ball drafts, if he's available in the late sixth round, like I'm hitting the cop button on Sony Michelle there every time. Some other guys like Big Ben is quarterback 15 off the board now. I hated him going into the season because he was like quarterback eight in the beginning. Now he's quarterback 15 and he's going to get 600 pass attempts. There's only going to be a handful of quarterbacks, no matter how maybe shitty you think Big Ben is as a quarterback in terms of efficiency. Yes, he lost some weapons, but there are not going to be that many quarterbacks in the NFL that hit that type of volume. At quarterback 15, I no longer hate Big Ben. He is no longer on someone's list that I am avoiding. Same with a guy like David Njoku. I think I think maybe the hate has gone too far, right? Where Njoku was like the tight end five or six when the offseason started. Now he's pushed back to like tight end 10, 11. I'm getting him in the 10th, 11th round. And I get the concerns, but he's still an athletic freak. Uh, and he's still got Baker Mayfield there. And they had some quality games, some quality connections going on there. And if he could take a step up as a player and be more versatile, I'm completely fine grabbing him in the 10th or 11th round. He's not on my do not draft like whatsoever list. It's just the value in like the sixth round when you can get other guys there that are really quality just wasn't there. Okay, see, this is exactly why I'm I'm so happy like fading wide receivers early and and just stacking up on them in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. Because one, I'm still kind of torn on Tyreek Hill, to be honest with you. All the reports are saying, well, one, the reports are still saying that we have no idea when this is going to wrap up, which makes it a concern because if it doesn't happen until midway through the season, it could be a, you know, a potential playoff hit for you. Uh, but that's more of a concern for season long leagues and best ball. It's just straight up points each week, however your highest points are. So if he mix, if he misses weeks one through four, it's the same thing in best ball as his, him missing weeks eight through 12 or four t- or 13 through 16. You know what I mean? Unless you're playing in the best ball championship with draft has. So uh, with Tariq Hill, I mean, I guess I'm cool at the end of the fourth round because everything is pointing towards him getting four games max. I haven't heard anything higher than four games in over like a month, any reports or anything like that. So I'm cool with him there. If you want to go more risk averse and make sure that you're getting the maximum amount of points week in and week out, Chris Godwin. I I mean, I don't love him there. I would love Tyler Lockett. I wish Tyler Lockett just fell to me. Look, um, I want to talk about Tyler Lockett actually after for a little bit. I probably should have taken Lockett over Hill and hoped that Hill fell to me, but I don't think he would have. And this is the first time I've taken Hill, I feel like, in a long time. So there's just a lot of um, a lot of value in the middle rounds for wide receivers and, and, and even tight ends, too, because you can get an O.J. Howard or like a Hunter Henry down here. I'm hoping Godwin falls to me. If not, I'll probably grab Calvin Ridley here. N- Nick Nust. I got a fucking problem with you, dog. You're going to come in my draft and you're going to time out on live television. On live TV, you're going to time out and take the fucking guy that I wanted. Now I got a problem. Now I got a problem. Not that big of a problem because I'm still getting Calvin Ridley. And I've broken down Calvin Ridley plenty of times. I really like Calvin Ridley for the fact that Dirk Cutter's coming over. They're going to throw the ball 70% of the time. They're playing in the dome, which works towards a fast player like Calvin Ridley. 4-4 speed. He's going to be a great deep option. Again, it's best ball. He played inconsistent last year, but you don't have to decide when to start him. So again, guys, for uh, for for newcomers or guys that have not played on Draft.com, go sign up on Draft.com, download the Draft app, and use promo code BDGE. Throw in ten bucks, and you will get an extra three dollars on top of that with the promo code. I start up drafts like this all the time throughout the week. So if you add me, my username is right up here, Nick Ercolano. Um, you do have to, so people that are new, you have to add friends through the app. Like you'll be able to go to your profile and add friends, but I don't believe you could do it on the website yet. So make sure that you add me and I start probably between five and 10 different drafts throughout the week, not just a live one that I post on Fridays, obviously. So you could practice with your boy. 
And I've done enough practice to know that these are the wide receiver rounds, baby. See, here's Sony Michelle dropping. Chris Carson is going to continue to drop. Fifth round, questionable. As soon as it hits sixth round, smash that cop button, please. But you'll be able to get a ton of good wide receivers here. And uh, even later in rounds, again, like I can wait two rounds, grab Christian Kirk. I could wait a um, few rounds and grab these second year wide receivers like Marquez in the eighth, Kiki QT in the ninth. Curtis Samuel's a good best ball pick because he has his big games and his not so big games. Cortland Sutton. So if you just stack up, you go RBs early, right? And then stack up a lot of high upside plays and go maybe eight wide receivers. You pick 18 players on the team. There's no kickers, no defense. It automatically starts the best quarterback, two best running backs, three best wide receivers, one tight end. And then you have, I don't know, do the goddamn math, seven, eight, 11 bench spots. So you could probably go with eight wide receivers, seven wide receivers, six running backs, depending on what your team looks like when you kind of start getting to those later rounds. <laughs> there you go. Sony finally went off at 6-2. Like Latavius Murray, a backup, is going prior to Sony Michelle. And had I not gotten a tight end, I probably would have targeted one in these middle rounds, 5-6, and I'll probably target a quarterback as long as all the top guys are not off the board. If Aaron Rodgers falls to me here, I'll take him. If he doesn't, I will sit on quarterback and probably try to pair up some combination of Matt Ryan, Kyler Murray, Carson Wentz, and Cam Newton and Dak. Those have been my most highly owned players by far. Yep, so there goes Chris Carson at 6'5", and I'm assuming... Ah, there goes Rodgers. Got schnoiked by him. I'm assuming Rashad Penny will not go too far after because look at the ADPs, man. They are starting to get really close to each other. Sammy Watkins in the sixth round. I don't hate either because, listen, if Tyreek Hill misses four games, Watkins probably going to have a big four games. Oh, and if he doesn't, I don't think he's that bad either. Rashad Penny, there he goes. Got sniped. Snipe City. So, all right, we're sitting here, and I'm going to be looking at running backs and wide receivers. Um, at the end of the sixth round, I don't have a lot of shares of Allen Robinson or Alshon Jeffrey. These are two, like, wide receiver ones on their respective teams, but kind of questionable situations. One, Allen Robinson is playing with a very inaccurate quarterback. Two, Alshon Jeffrey is now, you know, competing with Ertz, Deshaun Jackson, Goddard, Miles Sanders, like all of these wide receivers um, and he hasn't really been able to stay that healthy. But Allen Robinson is a guy that, you know, I don't hate at the end of the sixth round because he will probably lead the team in targets. Trubisky's wildly inaccurate, but you might ask me, you know, Christian Kirk, why would you not take him there, right? You love Christian Kirk. He's one of your must-draft players, and you're trying to target him everywhere. One, Christian Kirk's outlook. I do think he's going to have a good season-long league. I do. Um, and I think his upside is actually pretty high in this offense. That's going to run a lot of plays. Nick Nuss just literally keeps timing out and taking players I like. You're fucking, I'm going to block you. I'm going to report you. I'm going to report you for spam and harassment. And I will probably call the authorities. That being said, Christian Kirk is a guy that like the sixth round seems pretty fucking high for me. And I know all you guys listen to me. So that's why his ADP is probably boosted in these drafts. But like, he's not like a sure thing. None of these guys that I like that are in the eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th round, they're far from sure things, right? Christian Kirk could end up just, you know, splitting targets with Larry Fitzgerald. This offense, you know, their O-line is fucking terrible. Kyler Murray's going to be running for his life. What if he gets hit 30 times in the first six games and gets hurt? This offense goes to shit. What if this offense coming from Cliff Kingsbury, who got fired from his last fucking job midway through the season, just doesn't work? You know, usually you don't move up in, in fucking from job to job to the big leagues, and then all of a sudden you're just so much better there than you were before. There's a lot of red flags there still. So, like, Christian Kirk, if he starts going in the fifth round, it's a, it's a dumb fucking pick. I'll be the first to say that. Um, so no quarterbacks. I'll still sit on quarterbacks because there's after that top tier, you're kind of just sitting on guys that are not great. I also don't have a lot of Jarvis Landry. I have almost no Jarvis Landry. And it's kind of the same thing with Njoku. It's like, yes, I understand the hate for him, right? OBJ comes over and there are now 80 targets or 100 and sorry, 150 targets probably going over to Odell, which kills a lot of the passing offense. But I, but I still think Baker is going to be one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the NFL. And sometimes, you know, fantasy doesn't have to be that hard. Landry was going in like the early fifth round, I believe, when, when drafts first, first started off. Now you can get him midway through the seventh. And uh, I'm fine with that because I faded wide receiver early, right? And I'm going to grab some high, um, high ceiling, high upside wide receivers later in drafts that will give me a good balance between floor and ceiling. So if like, 
I take, you know, QT and I take MVS and they have games where they just don't hit that ceiling, right? Week, week over week, they'll probably be more boom bust than anything else. I'll have a guy like Landry who's sitting there with six catches and 60 yards or six catches and 48 yards and maybe a touchdown, right? So regardless, you, you keep that floor on, on your bench. Since you don't actually pick who to start, it automatically starts the best guys at each position. That's what I like to do. And you just see me stacking wide receivers here. Like I don't hate, I don't hate how my team is turning out right now based on going two running backs and a tight end to start. Let's look at it. What do we got here? So we have C-Mac and Chubb who are going to fucking dominate for me at running back. Then we have Tyreek Hill, Calvin Ridley, Allen Robinson, Jarvis Landry as my four wide receivers. And I'd argue that that's three wide receiver twos right there. Um, Robinson and Ridley probably have top 15 upside if things break right. And Tyreek Hill obviously has the suspension looming, but <coughs> if he only misses four games, then he'll more than make up for that in the other 12 that I'll have him for. So I kind of actually really like how this team came out. And of course, I have Ertz as my tight end. So I don't have to worry about tight end. I will usually grab another tight end with, I mean, you have to grab a second tight end because there's bye weeks. And of course, there's always injuries to account for. So you don't want to ever have a zero in any of the positional slots. Um, but this is why you can let quarterback fall because after Aaron Rodgers goes, you know, there's just a ton of picks where this entire like second tier is just a shit show. Everyone from Baker through. Okay. So like Jared Goff, let's go to Jared Goff stats last year. Jared Goff threw for 4,700 yards, 32 touchdowns, added 100 yards on the ground, and two rushing touchdowns. But he's going to get picked seven rounds later than Baker Mayfield. Do, are you really expecting Baker Mayfield to throw 4,700 passing yards and 32 touchdowns? Even if he, even like, it's not going to be that much better, guys. I can't, I can't tell you, like, how bad, in my opinion, reaching for a guy like Baker Mayfield early, right? Is it's just a bad pick. It's just a, it's just a bad process, in my opinion. We see Ebron going off the board. Ebron's situation is is funky too. We have Ebron and Jack Doyle both dealing with with injuries right now, which I think makes Devin Funchess even a, a, like a better pick because if either of them rush back from their injuries, right? We have groin surgery for Ebron, and we have Jack Doyle still coming back from the hip injury. If either of them pushes themselves too early, then they're then they're probably going to re-injure themselves, right? And uh, we talk about injuries a lot on this channel and two places that you could find more about the injuries that we uh, break down is the videos that I've done with Dr. Jesse Morse. And I know a lot of you guys love when I bring him on the channel. So he'll be coming back if you're watching this on Friday in five days. Wednesday's video will be Dr. Morse coming back onto the channel to talk about some of the recent injuries and some overall general strategy and fantasy when it comes to, you know, sit start players when it comes to injuries and things like that. So that's going to be a really good episode. Stay tuned for that. And in the draft guide, bigdogsdraftguide.com, which helps you prep for your 2019 fantasy football season and your entire draft. He's doing individual injury write-ups. So for like 40 or 50 players, every single player that has some kind of injury concern going into the season or right now coming off of last year, whatever, he's doing individual write-ups on them and using some kind of scale, right? A one to 10 system rating them on their injury risk going into 2019. So that's super helpful. That's been one of the most helpful things to me as a fantasy player. So he'll be on Wednesday. You can also go check out the injury reports in Big Dog's draft guide in the draft guide on bigdogsdraftguide.com. I need to fucking take a drink of water. Honestly, I'm going to, I'm going down the shore, going down the Jersey shore this weekend to, uh, Snacks' beach house. So I actually need to start hydrating right now because I know how much of a shit show it's going to be. And that's why I'm filming on Wednesday because I probably won't have time considering I'm leaving to go down the shore for the weekend. So I want to film this now. Mentally prepare for what's going to happen there. We're actually filming this week's Fade the Public episode while we're down the shore. Maybe in the pool. Probably can't do the pool because the audio equipment will get fucked. Uh, also, y'all, if you are enjoying the video so far, which I can't imagine you are because I've just been talking like a crackhead for the last 30 minutes straight, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated. If you're impressed by how fast I talk, how many minute, how many words per minute I could spit out of my face hole, I would also appreciate a thumbs up on that. So if you enjoy it, do that. While you're down there, subscribe to the channel. If you're new, we're doing these mock drafts every single Friday up until when your drafts start 
in uh, September, pretty much. Oh, Lord. Okay, see, so I haven't taken a, a quarterback yet. And Kyler's still on the board, and I really like Kyler. My problem is I want either MVS or Kiki QT. Have, any of the, have either of these guys taken a quarterback yet? No, so they're actually likely to take a quarterback at the turn, which I like because there's only four picks between me and them. So I'm going to take one of the wide receivers now, MVS, who I absolutely love for a breakout year. And he's going to he's going to be the wide receiver two in Green Bay. And I think both of these guys might take a quarterback at one of their picks. Which means. Actually, that was the dumbest fucking thing I've ever said. I meant to do that reverse. I meant to take a quarterback. I should have taken a quarterback. The logic behind it would be would have been me taking a quarterback because neither of them two have taken a quarterback yet. And Nick Nuss is going to fucking time out again and take the guy I want again. Kyler Murray. You mother, you stupid motherfucker. I'm not really mad at you, Nick. It's a great fucking first name. So I should have taken Kyler there and then left MVS on the board because I thought one of these guys would take a quarterback and they did. It wouldn't have been Kyler, it would have been someone else. And then there would have been a more likely scenario of him dropping to me. Oh, snipe me on fucking Kiki QC. I hope they give you another quarterback, Nick. I hope so fucking bad that they do. So Darius Geis, Darius Geis, what is, what is my take on the, um, what is my take on the wide receiver or the running back situation in Washington? Well, I will not be taking Darius Geis. You know what? I actually kind of like stacking Geronimo Allison and, uh, and MVS, but I'm not going to take them. I need to get one of them at value. I'm going to take my first quarterback here and it's going to be Cam. Cam is just ridiculous upside. I'll pray that he doesn't get hurt. And then I'll look for my quarterback too afterwards. So Darius Geis obviously was going through his ACL surgery, his rehab, which happened last summer. There was an infection which pushed it back an extra three months. So it was almost as if he tore his ACL midway through the 2018 season when you're looking at it from a rehab timeline standpoint, which is not good news. We don't like to draft players who are coming back from their ACL surgery midway through the season. We like them two years removed from it, not the first year removed from it. They signed Adrian Peterson, who, again, I've said this many times, he wouldn't have re-signed if he didn't think he was actually going to play. Chris Thompson is coming back, which Dr. Jesse Morris will actually be breaking down this exact situation on Wednesday's video. But Geis re-injured his hamstring, or he he pulled his hamstring, which probably happened because y'all are watching all these fucking Twitter and Instagram videos like, oh my God, he looks so good, he looks so good. Yeah, that's what happens when you push yourself really early on, then you pull a hamstring. That's what, that's, that's what happens. That's fucking science right there. It's into your face hole. And, uh, and he pulled his hamstring and reportedly, this was the first we heard of it. Reportedly it happened a couple of weeks ago. Regardless, it's not good for his return timetable. We were already off Darius guys. We were moving back on him because the timetable was just too quick for his return from the ACL. Now he's got another hiccup. So yeah, unless the only, the only way I can even imagine Darius guys kind of being back on my draft board is if we get midway through August and we actually see him on the field with the starters in the second preseason game and the third preseason game. And he's looking really good. That's probably about the only way that I could see guys really getting back into that like single digit round pick for me. Adrian Peterson, in that case, obviously moves up. Um, Darius Geis is much higher, has a much higher re-injury risk now with all this nonsense going on with him. I kind of like Chris Thompson too. Chris Thompson is a guy I'm starting to target more in the later rounds of best ball drafts, especially. Um, we saw what his upside was a couple of years ago. He was so fucking good at being the pass catching back in Washington prior to him getting hurt. Bryce Love's probably going to start on the pup. I've, there's no, don't even think about Bryce Love in redraft, um, 2019 is not going to be anything to do with Bryce Love. Thompson's contract, I believe, is up at the end of this year. So Bryce Love could be that guy next year. But for right now, it's a messy situation. And there probably will be someone that comes out of it and that is fantasy relevant. But uh, again, I'm probably going to take the cheapest guy. And right now, that's, that's Chris Thompson in the uh, in like the 16th round. I've, you've been able to get him. Adrian Peterson is not a bad pick, but I'm, I'm not like looking at him as like a top 10 pick in terms of draft capital, I, I still think like Geis might be, I'm not, I'm not predicting Geis to be, um, you know, like injured and just miss the entire season, but they're going to scale back his workload a lot if he is injured, right? They don't want to re-injure him to the point where it's another serious injury. So we could see it be a complete time split between AP and Geis, like both getting, you know, somewhere between eight and 12 carries a game. And that kind of defeats anyone's 
fantasy value in that sense. So we're seeing, okay, LaShawn McCoy, we don't want to do that. You just hate to see it. I'm liking Jordan Howard a little bit more too. Um, some guys that have just moved up in my draft board that I, like I said, I hated before, but I kind of like now. Same with thing with uh, Derrick Henry. I'll have a video out soon, kind of probably breaking down what my thoughts are on Derrick Henry because he's kind of a polarizing fantasy pick at this point that, you know, in the beginning of the season, I absolutely hated him. But now I'm, I'm kind of likening up to drafting him on, uh, you know, maybe not drafting him on a lot of my teams, but he's not someone I'm avoiding anymore, whereas I definitely was prior to um, kind of digging into the numbers. So I tweeted this out a couple days ago. Three guys that have no business being picked anywhere within the top 100 picks. It was LaShawn McCoy, Kareem Hunt, Derek McKinnon. These two ADPs have corrected themselves. We're still seeing McCoy getting picked early. Like, just just don't do it. I'm, like, too tired to explain why, but just, just, just save yourself. So we went five wide receivers basically in a row after we went two running backs and a tight end. And that's why I like it because there's so there's no value really at running back when you start to hit the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth rounds, right? So that's where the value is in running backs. And they snagged Dak for me. Um, I'm going to probably try to get Lamar Jackson on the turn here. I'm sure Nick Nuss will time out and take him, but that's cool. So I'll probably try to pad saw, uh, some of my running back, some of my running back roster spots here. Um... I like Peyton Barber here. I'm looking for guys that could actually give me production now. Not high upside guys. Not yet. I'll go more high upside later in the drafts because I only have two running backs. I have Chubb and McCaffrey. And if something happens to one of them, uh, if one of them gets hurt, or if one of them is on a bye week, I need someone who's at least going to throw production up behind them. And Peyton Barber will get carries week in and week out. I would, I'll would. i take Peyton Barber in the t- at the end of the 10th, early 11th round over Ronald Jones in the 8th, 9th round right now all day and tomorrow. Until we see Ronald Jones actually running with the starters in the preseason games and him playing over Peyton Barber, I'm not really going to believe all the fucking hype that's coming out. And Peyton Barber's going to be the goal line back there. It's 225. And he's going to get a lot of carries. So give me the guy with at least a floor. I know it's boring. It's a shitty floor, but it's a floor. And when I faded running back, if I, if I had four running backs right now already, four solid running backs at this point in the draft... Yeah, maybe I'd go for a more high upside guy. Like maybe I'd go with Carlos Hyde as like a handcuff. Maybe I'd go with a Justice Hill or something like that. But I need I need floor right now because I don't have depth. God damn it, someone sniped me on Lamar Jackson. I should have known. The video I put out this morning was about Lamar Jackson. We did top sleepers at the quarterback and the tight end position. If you missed that, make sure you go check it out. That was on Wednesday. Skirt. The fuck is this? What is this? Um, okay, so Paris Campbell, yeah, I'm off the rookie wide receivers pretty much. You know, and speaking about Ben Roethlisberger falling all the way, I might grab him here because I kind of like him. I like Kirk Cousins too. Um, maybe I'll wait one. Nah, I don't know if I could wait because I'm because I'm early. I'm like kind of early in the draft order. I know three. Three is almost the same thing as being on the turn, right? So it's kind of early and I don't have another pick for 12 teamers. So it's probably like 16 or 18 picks or something. So there's probably a good chance that like this next tier of quarterbacks right here, like these four or five guys go off the board and then I'm stuck with like Derek Carr as my quarterback too, which you don't want to happen. So I'll take, I'll take Big Ben. Like I said, I, I, I think the hate has probably gone too far to the point where he's getting picked outside the top 15 quarterbacks and he's going to throw the ball 600 times. So like he's becoming a value in my opinion. Mm, there's still a lot of good wide receiver value on the board too, which is, so I like I I almost should have just fucking drafted eight wide receivers in a row and just faded quarterback. I like Dante Moncrief a lot. If I could stack him with Big Ben, that'd be that'd be what's all. Uh, Devin Funches, yes sir. If one of these tight ends goes down, Devin, Devin Funches is going to run as a wide receiver too here. Get tons of red zone looks. He's only twenty five. Pair him up with Andrew Luck. Let's fucking eat. Dante Moncrief basically played what I think Devin Funches is going to play in Indy a couple of years ago, right? Dante Moncrief dealt with so many injuries. Funches is not the same. We don't look at Funches as an injury prone guy. Moncrief, the only reason people thought he never like broke out was because of these injuries that he always suffered. But when he was on the field, he was an absolute touchdown monster with Andrew Luck. I could see the same thing happening with Devin Funches, similar players. And Tyrell is a, is a player that I kind of want to like in best ball, but he's just not on a good enough team. I just, I just, I would rather draft players if I'm going for a tiebreaker 
on good teams. Like right here. It's a perfect example. Tyrell Williams versus Traquan Smith. Give me Traquan there. The wide receiver two behind an elite wide receiver one. Same situation for both of them. One is Drew Brees. One is Derek Carr. One's in an offense that's going to score a lot of points. One's in an offense that people are going to get mad at me for saying they're not going to score a lot of points, but they're not going to score a fucking lot of points. It's just a big facts. Anthony Miller. Y'all know I like Anthony Miller. I even, I think Loki, I actually think Andy Isabella might put up the most production out of a rookie wide receiver. Wow. It's pretty hefty. Uh, it's a pretty hefty projection for Isabella out of the gate. I wonder if draft takes this. Oh, they take it from Roto wire, I guess. Interesting. Their projection for Isabella, 87 targets, 62 receptions, 791 yards and five touchdowns. That's a really fucking good rookie year. And I understand why. I understand. There you go. A- AP goes off the board at 11-11. I think that's about the, probably the right time to pick them. All of my wide receivers that I like just got schnoiped. Um, This Arizona offense, man, all we're hearing is that they're going to run a lot of plays. And I do believe it. I definitely think that's a possibility. A strong possibility of that happening. And I think I probably need to start liking David Johnson a little more. Last year just hurt me so much that it's becoming really, it's really, 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 really hard. This is what's going to happen too. Like I know what's going to happen. David Johnson killed me last year. So I stopped. So I, so I hate him this year. And then everyone's like, no, you have to like David Johnson. You're being biased. He's set up to be a fucking, the best fantasy player in the history of the world. You have to take him. And eventually after months and months and months and months of the public of you fuckers, not you guys, you're big dogs if you're watching this shit, but the public hounding me about how good David Johnson is going to be and all this buzz around him. And then I'm going to take David Johnson in the first round of like, I'm going to end up getting him in like three of my fucking drafts. And then he's going to disappoint again and he's going to suck. And I'm going to be like, fuck, I knew I shouldn't have taken David Johnson. And he's going to burn me two years in a row. I know that's what's going to happen. I know it. I fucking know it. Sorry. I don't know why I just did that. I'm about to start crying, to be honest. What are you sending me, dude? Bruh. 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 Yeah, y'all. If, um, again, if you're enjoying the video, thumbs up down below. All it does is it takes two seconds just to scroll down there, hit that thumbs up button. It helps me out a lot. And if y'all want to draft with me, I'm actually going to start another draft while we're in this draft. You're not going to see it, but I'm going to start it on my phone. On my phone. Um, so if you want to draft with me, make sure that you add me on the draft app, Nick Ercolano, and we will hang out together. I have the 10th pick right now in another draft. I find it really hard to get high on D.D. Westbrook. Like, I understand that people like him and he's pretty good as a player, but, uh, but I have no fucking confidence in that Jaguars offense. I really don't. Hey, there we go. I'm going to grab Traquan here. There are reports coming out, or there was statements from Drew Brees saying that he's really excited to play with Traquan Smith this year. And Traquan has looked really good so far in um, minicamp and OTAs and stuff, which is always good to hear. You want to hear that coming from the player. It's not like, uh, you know, he's saying we hope that he can, you know, improve or become a better player so that he can get a role. It's like, yo, we're excited to see what he could do this year, which is, you know, you got to look for the right things when you hear these reports. All right. With the 10th pick in this one, we already got four wide receivers. Sorry. I'll stop mumbling to myself. Start up another one. Another one. And the cool thing, I, these are slow. A lot of them are slow drafts that I do. So you could do a fast draft like we're doing now with 30 seconds per pick. Or you could do a fast draft, which is, I literally just said the same thing. A slow draft, which is. Um, eight hours per pick. If you've never done a slow draft, they're actually kind of awesome because I'll start off like five of them and then, you know, every hour or so I'll just get a notification that, hey, your pick is up. So it's not like you got to be there and attentive and available. So they have slow drafts, they have fast drafts, they have buy-ins anywhere from a dollar up to like $1,000, $2,500. They have some big, some big high stakes buying. Wow, that draft filled up quick. I got the two pick in this one. Cool. So let's see if there's any value on the board at tight end. Chris Herndon's going to miss four games, so I'm probably going to fade him. I might take him as like a last round pick if he sits there. It's funny, dude. I kind of like Jimmy Graham. I, it was funny. If you follow me last year at all, uh, I absolutely hated Jimmy Graham. I was like telling everyone, 
from like the first day 2018 offseason started, I was like, if you pick Jimmy Graham, you're a fucking moron. You're not a moron. It's just, you know, it was a miss. It was a big, easy, I, I thought it was an easy bust to spot. I like him a lot more going into this year than I did last year. Um, it was his first year in the offense. Aaron Rodgers' touchdown rate was at an all-time low last year, 4.2%. I think he bounces back and throws between 35 and 40 touchdowns as opposed to the 25 he threw last year. I think his offense is going to be more explosive, and I think Jimmy Graham will probably end up more uh, closer to the 5 to 7 touchdown range than he was last year. I think he scored two touchdowns last year. So um, I'm low-key. I low-key do not hate um, Jimmy Graham this year in best ball drafts whatsoever, although you might think I do because of... How, I, how much I hated him last year. So I had the two pick in this one that I just started up on my phone and I went with Zeke at the two. So that's how I feel about that. Skirt. I can't stop making memes. Fantasy football memes. And it's fucking me up a little bit. I've spent like two hours today just thinking of different memes to make. Like this is one of the better ones that I did. It's so true. Like you hate to take a tight end in the first round. But if you have the if you have the turn pick, I'll take tight end. I'll take Travis Kelsey in the second round just to be like, yeah, I didn't take Travis Kelsey in the first. Saw it though. My energy is depleted. It's so hot. It's so hot. Okay. It's probably so time to start looking at running backs. So Devin Singletary is a guy I really like, but he's probably not a great best ball option. And I say that because I don't think he's going to start out of the gate as a starter, but I think he could be really useful. What I think is going to happen is he's going to come on the second half of the year, maybe weeks 10 through 16 and be really good in season long leagues. But if you draft him right away, and obviously there's a ton of time between training camp and, and preseason games that will switch what I'm talking about here. Um, oh, wow. Justin Jackson's still on the board, huh? I didn't even realize that. I hope he falls to me. Um, there's a lot of time between now and then. And he could earn the starting job. But there's a good chance that if you draft Devin Singletary within like the first three or four weeks in a season long, you're going to drop him. So I tend to stay away from... Uh, Guys like that, um, in best ball, because you you're probably not going to get production out of them for like literally the first half of the year. So good, cousin David, take that shit. Take all of the, uh, take all of them. I'll go with Justin Jackson here, and I've been on record. Like obviously, I, I like Austin Eckler a lot more than I like Justin Jackson. But if something happens to Melvin, right? They don't want to pay him. He sits out. If he gets traded. Like, Jackson is is going to have a really nice floor in that offense and could really compete. I think both of them could be top 24 running fantasy running backs. I would much rather have Eckler because I think he has a more valuable role. He's also bigger. But, um, yeah, give me Justin Jackson in the 14th round all fucking day of best ball drafts. I, don't, I wonder where Austin Eckler went. Let me check on my phone for y'all. I feel like he probably didn't even move up that much. Friday's YouTube film. Literally, while, while I'm doing this, pick up your phone. You're probably watching on your phone. Fuck. If you're on your laptop. Open up a new tab. Go to draft.com. Fucking sign up, bro. Sign up, bro. Eckler, where are you? I can't find him. Okay, so, oh, okay. He moved, he, Eckler moved up. He's in the eighth round now. He's in eighth round pick. Um, it's probably a little early for my liking, but I don't think I'd fault anyone. I, dude, there's a lot of running backs that I think are, are just so undervalued right now at the end of these drafts. Chase Edmonds, Gio Bernard, Malcolm Brown, three of them right off the rip, and Jalen Richard. All these pass catching backs that I think have legitimate roles in their offenses. And Gio Bernard has RB1 upside when Mixon is gone. We already saw that last year. He was an RB1 when Mixon got hurt. Chase Edmonds, I think, with the sheer number of plays are going to run. He's also looked way better than fucking David Johnson did last year. Don't at me. Don't at me. Chase Edmonds is the best running back in the Arizona Cardinals backfield. 
Don't at me. Let me use the fucking 107 on Chase Edmonds next time. I'm only this angry because I'm so sweaty right now. I promise. I'm usually a very nice person. That's what my mom tells me. So we got five running backs. We got six wide receivers, two tight ends, two quarterbacks. Let's check out the Rasta so far. The Rasta. Quarterbacks, we got Cam and Ben. I like that. I might grab a third quarterback only because Cam has the injury concern. At tight end, we have Zach Ertz and Jimmy Graham. I'm cool with that. Ertz gives you a really good weekly PPR floor, and Graham will give you a few weeks where he scores a touchdown. Running back, C-Mac, Nick Chubb, Peyton Barber, Justin Jackson, Chase Edmonds. Obviously, we are very top-loaded at running back and very uh, not middle-loaded at running back. It's the worst fucking way to describe what my team looks like right now. Wide receiver, Hill, Ridley, Allen Robinson, Jarvis Landry, Marcus Valdez-Cantling, Traquan Smith. I really like that wide receiver group. And this is probably a strategy that I will, I will implement in a lot of season-long leagues. Trying to grab running backs early. Maybe grab a top tight end and then just pound those middle rounds with wide receivers. And you'll get like entire strategy write-ups in the draft guide. The uh, Big Dog's Gotta Eat Bible, which is a massive write-up I do each year. Talking about the best strategy, position by position, how to attack your exact draft. It's like 10,000 words. Probably be like 5,000. My, my lazy ass is getting extra lazy this summer. But it's in there. Huge strategy. BigDogsDraftGuy.com. Check it. It'll drop probably... I scheduled it originally for August 1st, but I kind of want like the first week or two of preseason games to play out so that I have a better idea of you know how I actually want to attack the draft rather than writing a huge write-up on August 1st and then like something happens, injured players in preseason or... Something happens that we didn't expect, and then the write-up is obsolete. Hard to creep these Brooklyn streets. Fuck all that bickering beef. All right, sorry, I'm done. But then again, some people who bought the draft guide might be drafting in early August, which I don't ever recommend you do that. But it happens, and I don't want them to feel like they didn't get value out of it. Ooh, my neck hurts. Ooh. What do we still got here? So, yeah, I might take a, a third quarterback. I definitely won't take a third tight end because I like Ertz and Graham. A little stack action there. Antonio Callaway is a guy I've been grabbing so often. I wonder what my own ownership percentage is. Let me see if I can find it out here. I'll probably I, I could find that out on the app a lot quicker. Let me see what I have. And they have this on here. So if you're drafting and you ever want to see your ownership percentage... Go to My Drafts on the bottom, the menu item on the bottom. Scroll all the way down and click on Upcoming NFL 2019 Best Ball. And once you click that, it will load um, Best Ball Ownership. And then you can see, and you can break it down by all sizes because sometimes I do, you know, eight-person drafts, 10-person drafts, 12-person drafts just to fuck around with. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so Antonio Callaway is actually up there. Of the guys I have the highest ownership percentage in, of the wide receivers I have the highest ownership percentage in, in 12-team leagues, Brandon Cooks leads it, 22% owned. I grab him in the fourth round of basically every draft. Sometimes he drops to the fifth round. It's beautiful. 22%, Robert Foster, 21%, Mike Evans, 18 Anthony Miller, 18 Hilton, 16 Deshaun Jackson, 16 and Antonio Callaway is right there at 16 So he is one of my highest owned wide receivers. I just think he's going to have those big boom games. He's a great deep threat paired with an, an, an incredible deep passer. His stats could have been way better. And as you can see here, this is one of the, the, like the latest reports we heard out of Cleveland. Um, straight from Baker Mayfield. We've been very happy with how Callaway came back from the offseason ready to go, just how quick he is. And then you can tell he's been working on his craft, which is good because one of the, one of the big concerns with Callaway was his off-the-field shit. Like, he is... I don't, I don't know if he's fucking immature. I never hung out with him. I don't know if he'd be fucking shooting rubber bands at me or not. But he had problems like staying out of trouble, right, with drugs and all this other stuff, stemming all the way back to college. That's why he drafted, but he's one of the most talented players coming out of his class. And the fact that they're telling you that, you know, he's working out hard in the offseason is good because that was a concern. Will he 
have the discipline to do that, you know, each year and progress as a player. And we're hearing it from Baker. You know, Baker's not one to, to fucking mince words, as we can see. He'll start beef with his own fucking teammates if that's the way he feels about things. So if it's coming from Baker, then I think he's earned enough credibility to uh, be someone that you can believe when you hear these quotes coming from. So I'm, again, huge, huge proponent of Callaway. I think he'll be the wide receiver too, starting on the outside across from Odell Beckham. We'll have plenty of open grass downfield on these deep balls and that's exactly what you look for in best ball so i'm all in on uh callaway that is my seventh wide receiver see what quarterbacks are left oh man there's like no starting quarterbacks i don't think i own any nick Foles, but i will take him here if he drops to me because he's the only one that's if healthy will start 16 games these other guys are probably splitting time or they're questionable to split time so it's oh there you go good pick chris thompson i forgot he was on the board too I've been getting a lot of Mariota in the 16th, 17th round, too. Oh, here we go. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, take Rex Burkhead, please. So I'll grab Nick Foles as a third quarterback. Um, I kind of hate him in best ball just because I feel like he just doesn't have any ceiling, especially in this offense. But, again, like you don't want to be drafting players who are going to give you zeros in your lineup for, you know, maybe for Haskins it's four weeks. Maybe for uh, – actually, I could have went with Flacco there. I probably should have went with Flacco. I didn't realize. I should start fucking paying attention when I do these videos, shouldn't I? Sorry, y'all. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. So we're good everywhere except running back and wide receiver. I'll probably go with a running back as my last pick just because I waited so long to kind of back up my top two guys with the depth. Who are we liking here? I like Mike Davis. I don't think he'll fall to me in the 18th, though. Tony Pollard becomes interesting because if Zeke does, in fact, hold out, which I really fucking doubt that will be the case, he should split time with maybe Mike Weber. Maybe they sign another guy. I don't know. There's not a lot of guys down here that give you a floor. Theo Riddick, maybe, but I feel like Theo Riddick, one, could get cut. Two, could just get completely phased out of the offense by carry on because he's a much more efficient pass catcher. And I just, I, I, I'm not one to draft guys that. One, like, are, have an uphill battle to even make the team. Like, yes, we've all seen reports about Bruce Anderson, whatever, but there's as good of a chance of him cracking the lineup as there is him even making the team. So I'm not going to use a pick this early in the offseason on a guy that we don't even know is going to make the team. I don't hate Doug Martin down here, as fucked up as it is. Y'all know I do not like Josh Jacobs. I wouldn't be surprised if Doug Martin had double-digit carries in, like, multiple games this year. So right now, like, Mike Davis would be my top pick, but there's, like, 10 more picks till we get back to me. Let's go to Roto World, check out some of the reports. Philip Lindsay is all systems go for the start of training camp. Interesting, okay. We'll ease him in, but it sounds like, why you got to ease him in if he's ready to go? He's coming off a wrist injury, not a torn ACL. But it sounds like Lindsay avoids the active pup list to open camp as the Broncos are the first team to report for camp. Lindsay will cede some first team reps to Royce Freeman, but Lindsay will have every opportunity to regain firm control of his lead back duties after a stellar rookie season. All right. Well, uh, training camp's about to start and shit's going to get fucking fun. Fuck, man. I've been doing this for so many months at this point that I'm just so ready to hear some actual things come out of camp besides fake news fucking people playing in shorts and dropping 20 pounds and dropping 50 pounds who's running with the first team who actually looks good when the pads are on is philip Lindsay that motherfucker that he showed us last year or is royce freeman ready to step up and become the rb1 here i don't know but we're about to fucking find out and i cannot wait austin hooper coach dan quinn believes austin hooper is ready to go to another level with his play why I actually surprisingly own like a decent amount of Austin Hooper because he's also another guy that where I think like, you know, the hate has gone too far. Um, probably because you guys listen to me, just hate on him. But when he drops into the 10th or 11th round, like he's really not that far of a tier behind some of the mid-tier guys. Austin Hooper is one, two, three, four, five, six. 
He's my sixth highest owned tight end. It's OJ Howard, Hunter Henry, George Kittle, Dallas Goddard, Zach Ertz, and then at 11%, it's a tie between Jared Cook, Austin Hooper, and Ian Thomas. Oh, no. And when you go to 12-team leagues, my ownership is even higher. He's my third highest owned tight end. So don't watch what I say. Watch what I do. Austin Hooper, I own him in 15% of tight end in uh, 15% of 12-team leagues. Same with Goddard. It's because he drops like the 11th round, and he's going to give you a floor of production. It's not a fun ceiling to have, but in the 11th round, especially if you faded tight end, like a lot of those guys going in that range have a, have a good chance of putting you up like a point or two a week or not even being the tight end in that offense. They're like splitting time. This ain't a fucking running back by committee. It's a tight end by committee. And that's not how you want your starting tight end to be on your fantasy team. So give me all the 11th round, 10th round Austin Hooper, yo. All right. But give me none of the 18th round Matt Lacoste. Wow. Mike Davis fell to me, huh? I just really like this offense. I think Mike Davis is, Mike Davis is the same guy as, as fucking David Montgomery. But he's just a little older. Probably not as elusive, but he fits the mold very, 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 very well. So, I'm really actually really happy that Mike Davis fell to me. Like, Rob Gronkowski at the, in the 18th round is like, it's cute, I guess, but you're about to put up a zero in your tight end spot. You're like wasting, like, every, every spot you have matters. There's only 18 guys on a roster. So, you know, if you're, if eight weeks goes and Rob Gronkowski then signs you're still missing out on that 18th player, right? That could be an extra quarterback that, that for one week puts you up 20 points or something like that. Um, so I'm, I would never draft a guy like that. And a lot of the same for all these guys, but this is about to wrap up and uh, we could see the final team, I believe. Maximize, yo. Show me my team. All right. Well, oh, here's my team. Let's click on it for like 30 minutes down there. This is the final squad, y'all. Let me know what you think about the team. Let me know uh, what your strategies are, whether it's season long or best ball. I'm interested to hear in best ball because, you know, we don't know everything. We do have someone, Mr. Uh, Steve Mullen, who is doing exclusive best ball content for Big Dog. So if you head over to BigDogsFantasy.com, he puts out a best ball article every single week, breaking down his strategies. And you can go follow him on Twitter at SRMullen1979. He even has his own YouTube channel, which is just his name, I believe, Stephen Mullen. And he's putting out his own best ball draft videos. So if you enjoyed this, you'll probably enjoy that. Again, go sign up for draft.com, the draft app. Use promo code BDGE. Get $3 to draft with. Go deposit 10 bucks, and you'll be set for the summer. Help you prep. You will be more ready than your league mates, especially if you cop the Big Dogs Draft Guide at BigDogsDraftGuide.com. That's all I got for today. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, subscribe, and I will see y'all on Monday. Have a great weekend. Peace.